politicians lay down their office for us. It, it doesn't happen that way, does it? So thank you, ladies, for that other message in song. We're going to be talking about the Christmas story way back in Genesis. So if you'll turn to uh, you'll, Genesis, is way, I think, towards the front of the Bible, you'll find it there. Genesis chapter 3. Sound like a Christmas story in Genesis, does it? But, it, but it's there. In fact, we found so many things in Genesis and went through that study. And, uh, this time of year, if you're in a liturgical church, anybody know the word liturgical? They, they pretty much have the, already set for the year what scriptures they're going to preach throughout. Which I'll tell you, the hardest thing about preparing a sermon is just finding what to preach this Sunday. And, of course, the Holy Spirit works through the Word of God, no matter where it is and what order it's in. But in, 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 in the, 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 church, the church world, this is the first day of Advent. Y'all heard of the term Advent before? And that means we're looking forward to, to the coming of Christ. And so we're in the Advent season now with this Sunday. And it was interesting, as I was doing research on this sermon, I said, boy, I've got an angle on the Christmas thing that people be fine refreshing and all. And I looked in and one of those liturgical churches already had their sermon now. So it seems like we work for the same boss or something. I don't know what, what the thing is. But the same set of scriptures and the same, same thought pattern and also wonderfully, I, I count that as affirmation that the Holy Spirit is, is working and through His Word the way that He does. So, see if you hear the Christmas message. In this, I'm going to read a pretty long section here, and, and we're going to go from there into the, to the message. Y'all have heard this story before about Adam and Eve. How many of y'all have heard that before? Okay, that's what we're going to be talking. And, and uh, Eve has already been tempted, and here's where she succumbs to that temptation. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open. They knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to them, to Adam, and said, Where are you? And so he said, are you willing just a second when the computer comes back on? Shall go. You shall eat dust all the days of your life. 
How many of you notice that snakes are pretty close to the ground? And they have to eat dust. And I will put an enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. And you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then Adam, to Adam he said, Because you heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth of you, for you, excuse me, and you shall eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord made tunics of skin and clothed them. How many of y'all got Christmas out of that? You got to look close, don't you? We're going to go back. We're going to find Christmas in, in the middle of all that. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for, for being there. Thank you that, uh, Father, you don't look down and laugh, but, Father, you make provisions so that we can be rehabilitated, reborn, Father, in, in, into a life eternal. We thank you again and love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. At the beginning of that, real quick, unpack this thing. Uh, you know about the, the fallen woman. Remember, the woman didn't get the word from God, the word of God from God. She got it from her husband. And she didn't have it quite right, and Satan exploited that all that he could. But she still had a human nature. Adam and Eve, did you know they were created to last forever? But he said, if you eat of this tree, you will surely what? <coughs> not. They were created to last forever, but that didn't work. And so a death has to occur now. It has to happen or God's a liar. And our God is not a liar. But does God love Adam and Eve? Yes. yes. Could God get disappointed in Adam and Eve? Yes. Does God love even me? You can do that to yourself. Even me? Yes. Can God get disappointed in my decisions? Absolutely. Does God have a way for me to be reconciled to him? Yes. Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, the way you said is death, if we would be where Adam and Eve wind up facing death, and, and, and sadly death eternal, without God's provision. So it said, this is interesting, verse 6. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food and was pleasant to her eyes, and, the, uh, and a tree desirable to make one wise, so she took the fruit and ate. Who's, whose opinion was she taking when she decided to eat the food? It was her opinion. What, what was God's opinion? Now we'll do it. How, how complicated is that? Well, I need to study the theological aspects of this. God says don't. But, but he probably means something else, obviously. Because how many of us have ever done what we were not supposed to do, according to God? All is sin and comes short of the glory of God. So there's not a lot of heavy theological thinking there. It's I want what I want when. And whose judgment did she, set, did she uh, take to decide to eat off that tree? The woman saw that the tree was good for food. Whose eyes did she believe? Hers. Did she believe the, the wisdom of God? No. Just her opinion. She made her own judgment. I mean, she's already been alive you know, a week or two, whatever it was. I don't know how long it was. Someone once said that Adam was the only guy who couldn't say I, I wasn't born yesterday. You know, he's the only grown man that could say that I wasn't born. Because in many cases, he was born the day before. And he had to face all this garden stuff and all. But she's decided that she's got plenty of knowledge and experience of life to know what's good and bad. Because in her eyes, it looked good to her. Her opinion, how she felt about it, was well, pleasurable to her. And I can say, Daryl has made that same mistake to him. Right? I, I made up my own mind and I sadly did what? Said no to God's way. And then, Adam, uh, being the man that he was, he really showed up. She decided it was good. He heard one heard from God. He said, here, Adam. And he said, okay. How long did he suffer with that decision? It didn't take him long at all, did he? So did he believe God? Or did he believe, listen, the most beautiful woman on the face of the earth? Um, she was the ugliest too, but he wasn't looking at it that way. 
She was the only woman on the face of the earth. Can we get other people in a higher place in our life than our God? Can we get other people's opinions in a higher place than, than our God's? Not opinion, but fact. We can do that. And so he ate. Not to Christmas yet. Then the eyes of both of them were open. They knew they were naked. Well, now they knew the knowledge of good and evil. Before they were innocent, they didn't know what was evil and what was good because they hadn't experienced. But now they've experienced evil because they've done what? Perpetrated evil. What is evil? Not doing it God's way. So now they know for sure what evil is because that, that's what they've done. Did God create evil? No. He created the opportunity for evil. Right? If he said, this is the right way, then by default there is a wrong way. Amen? And so, who stepped into evil? I have never thought of that. Evil and the first two letters are evil. That's weird, huh? But anyway, we won't go into that. Because who was the one that got the word from God? Adam. Did you know in the rest of the Bible, God holds Adam more responsible than he does Eve? If you go do a study on that, you'll find out he holds Adam more responsible than Eve. By the way, where was he standing? He didn't knock that thing out of her hand. He said, let's see if this works out. Really? You know, he kind of said he uh, to, to, to be the scapegoat, but they thought that would do it. But again, just obey God. Both their eyes were open, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves for themselves and made coverings for themselves. This is almost silly. It's like the kids who are playing ball in the house and knock the lamp over, and so they stack the pieces up, put the lampshade on sideways, and hope mom won't notice. You, you know what I mean? It's just almost silly that they're making a covering for themselves. They didn't need a covering before. They were naked. They were innocent. But now that, that this isn't right, so we've got to cover ourselves. What coverings do we get to keep God from being mad at us? The very fact that they had a covering on says, uh-oh, God, we've done something wrong, right? And, and so we will come up with covers. Cover stories, cover opinions, cover this and that, and, 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 and none of them are at it. In fact, they're just downright silly. And she thought, well, it looked good to me, God, you know, or uh, uh, we fixed it, God. We were wrong being naked, so we covered it up with fig leaves. Anybody ever put with fig leaves on just a bare arm for a while, picking them? How do you wind up feeling at the end of the day? The itch, right? And how long will fig leaves, fig leaves last in the bright sunshine? You talk about disposable clothing, right? This goes away really. So it was, it was a horrible idea, but they came up with ways. We will hide from God behind work, behind academics. We'll hide from God behind what? How many different things do we use to cover our opinions and follow them instead of our God? Then they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. In other words, it was they knew the sound of the Lord. Apparently, they had communion with God, but now something has happened, and that relationship is not what it was before. And so God comes in. They are hiding now from God. What separates us from God? Our sin, right? We say, no, God, I don't want to hear from you, so I'm going to stay over here, and I'm going to do what I want, pretend that you're not listening. It's like the little kids do when they put their fingers in their ears and they go, ah, oh, out their mouth when you're trying to talk to them. They don't necessarily do that, but they're doing something in their head so that they're not listening to you now. And how many people does God see doing that in the world today? I'm not listening to you, God. I've got other things that's just making more noise in my ear, and I'm not even going to look at you in case, uh, in case, well, you know, if I'm not looking, then you don't see me. How smart is that? You ever seen the little ones that close their eyes so you don't see them? It's silly, but we do that to God. And then the Lord, verse 9, uh, called to Adam and said, where are you? Does God know where they are? I mean, who built the garden? Who put them in it? He knows right where they're at. You ever see a little one hiding from you? We can always talk about the little ones here because that's how we act before God. They're hiding from you. They're behind the curtain. They're, they're having to look to see if you're looking for them. Their feet are sticking out that far, you know, under the bottom of it, but they don't think you see it. You know, and you say, well, where's such and such? And of course, you know. And so here's God doing that. Where's Adam? And of course, and he knows where he's at. And Adam answered, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. That's the poor word parish talk. I was naked. And I hid myself. Right? And God says, who told you you were naked? Who told you that? Have you eaten 
from the Jews where he's prosecuted. Have you eaten? Of course, he knows he has. From the tree that I commanded you not to eat? And here she goes under the bus. The woman who you gave me, she gave it to me and I ate. Without me, and then again, did she have to convince him very much? I wonder if she even got it one inch from her body when he's already snatched it out of her hand. It almost has that picture. And it's like he was right there listening, if you read the text, listening as Satan is, is tempting her. And he's not interceding. He's not protector and provider for his wife there. Yes, ma'am. He's actually Yeah, yeah, because you gave me. Yeah. So it's not just the woman's fault, but God, you gave you an effective one here. <laughs> That prayer has never been prayed since by a husband or a wife has it. <laughs> No confessions? Never. Uh, and the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you've done? And what did she say? The serpent deceived me and I ate. She was a little more straight up than he was. I was duped and I fell for it, she said. Right? And then it's true, but she still fell for it. Then we get to the poor old snake. Now, can Satan inhabit creatures? Sure. You know about the hogs he went into the time whenever they, they cast him out of the, uh, of, of the, the demoniac in the garden of Gesserines, or however you say that word. Right? We know about that. We know that he, he's he, he inhabited people before. Lost people he's inhabited. But here it says, The Lord said in circuit, Because you've done this, you're cursed more than all cattle. And more than every beast of the field, on your belly you shall go, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. Now, let me ask you, does a snake know that he's cursed? The snake doesn't know he's cursed. This is just what snakes do. They go on their belly. But apparently before that, they didn't go on their belly. So it's not a sign to the snakes about this. Who is it a sign to and for? It's to us. When you see a snake, if you're like me, you go for the shovel of the hoe. Right? But if you see a snake, one of the things you can say, boy, I don't want to do what he did. <laughs> right? It's, it's God will have his say. And, and, and what you'll be reminded of that, of, of all the stuff out in the garden, is something happens, something <coughs> falls, something is cursed, whenever we disobey God. We should remember that. It's a sign, not to the snake, it's just the snake. But it is to us. And by the way, there's poison whenever we're deceived or we deceive Poison they can even bring death. So, all the days of their life. It says, did you know that even when they get to the millennial kingdom, the serpent will still be on his belly? So, I mean, it's not to be forgotten, according to Scripture, when you read some of the forward stuff that we're looking into in Revelation now. <laughs> then, here we go. Here's Christmas verse. Y'all ready? And I will put an enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Merry Christmas. Did y'all hear Christmas in there? It's there. You just got to look a little bit. First, what's an enmity? There's a problem between the seed of the woman and the seed of, of, of the serpent or the seed of the devil. Open hostility. Open hostility. Let me ask you something. How many of y'all are, are, are from a woman? You've been born of a woman? Most of you? Okay. Uh, but this is not from the woman, it's from the seed of the woman. This is, this is really almost confusing information because almost everything in biology and all that, they say, well, the seed is actually produced by the man through the egg of the woman is how uh, uh, embryos are created, how our babies are created, right? That's pretty much how it does. So this is really weird, seed of a woman. You know, any thought process, it doesn't go that way. Well, we know now. As we spoke about in the first hour, it's talking about the virgin birth. But this seed line coming to that point, Adam to Seth, Cain was not the seed that we're talking about. Cain would be the seed of the one who inhabited the serpent. So if you get to that idea, in other words, people who are born again spiritually are going to be related to the seed of a woman, right? And people who are not born again spiritually, who are they following? At this point. But what's Lord of their life at this point? Whatever sounds good and all that. Well, who's the prince of the power of the air? Satan is. And I don't know if you notice, Christians, but did you notice that sometimes there's some open hostility against you because you happen to believe in Jesus? Have you ever noticed that? 
Okay, don't let it make you mad. That's just a sadly natural course for things. There is enmity between the followers of Satan, whether they know they're following him or not, and the followers of Jesus Christ. It's there. Okay? And, and, and it, it shouldn't make us mad because the truth is, Christians, who are our mission while we're here? Those that aren't saved yet. And it's kind of hard to complete that mission whenever there's an enmity between. How many of you thought it was just against the snakes? How many of you already knew there was an enmity between you and snakes? There's a few people that like snakes, but there's a, most of us that just really are, are not fans. Right? But, but there, it's that way. And you say, well, Brother Darrell, where, where do you get that from? Well, it's interesting because uh, John the Baptist, whenever he saw the Pharisees and Sadducees who thought they knew God but didn't, they knew a lot of scripture, but they didn't know God. It said when they came to his baptism, he said to them, brood of vipers. What are vipers? Snakes. What's the brood? That's the family of the snakes. Right? So we're talking about the same thing. Those who are not following God are following the other power of the world. And that's John the Baptist talking about it. And then here's Jesus talking about it. Serpents, brood of vipers. How can you escape the condemnation of hell? What happens to those who don't find Christ and choose to become born again into his seed, into his family? They remain what? The family that follows, this, as it says, the snake side or, or the, 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 the enemy side. So all of that is interesting stuff. And who is that? Well, John chapter 8 tells us. Since you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father, uh, you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Who is the truth? Who, I didn't say what is the truth. I said who is the truth? Who is the way, the truth, and the life? Jesus is. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. What did he tell Eve? You surely won't die. Eve died. Amen? Eve died. Their relationship died right then. He's the father of lies. You know, he comes up with all these kind of things. And he says, you don't really have to listen to God, is what he said. The biggest lie of all. And, and so that's the problem. When we want something for Christmas, we usually want what? What we don't have. Amen? Would you agree with that? Our wants for Christmas is usually something we don't have. It may be a newer model of what we used to have, but we want the new one because we don't have the new one. We've still got the old one. It's, it's six weeks old. It's obviously no good anymore. Right? And so we want the new one, whatever it is. Well, what is it that people who aren't in the sea line of Jesus, his family, what is it they don't have? Salvation. They don't have a way to get there. That's a really empty place. And so what's promised then back in Genesis in that same verse, when, when we're in such a lost place, back in verse 15, the enmity is there, and it's natural. Don't let it make you mad. Don't say, well, they don't like me, and I don't know why they're mean, ugly people. No, if you see somebody that's lost, you know to recognize, I need to pray for this person. I need to what? Somehow show them where the light is. Look what it says, though. He shall bruise your head. Now, he's talking to the enemy himself. Now, when you get a lick on the head, another, another version say, crush your head. And you shall bruise his heel. He's talking to the snake. The best you can do to this champion is bruise his heel. But he's going to do what? You get the story of the crucifixion in there. Satan thought that he won in the crucifixion. <laughs> he thought he gave him a death blow. It turned out to be what? He got a nail through his foot. Amen? Amen? What did we get from that, though? What did we get from, from this coming, this, this, this child, this seed of this woman that's going to be coming on this day that we're looking forward to? What did we get? Eternal salvation and evil will be stamped out. Now listen. It's not stamped out yet. But if you're saved, the consequences are greatly diminished for you. Amen? You don't have to worry about eternal death for you anymore. You don't have to worry about hell for you anymore. Right? We, we get bruised and bumped along the way, but you don't have to worry about that anymore. Merry Christmas because of the seed of the woman. 
Right? And then we get what? This is an advent. A coming of, of the Savior. But He's coming back. And because of what? The decision that you've made now, it sets you up for when He comes back. And we won't have to worry about the bruising anymore after that, will we? But the fact that He's coming back means that we can re-gift the gift that you've got. How many people think re-gifting is bad? Let me go ahead and tell you, if you've got a brand new Gibson guitar and you need to re-gift it, I'm here, I'm available. You know, I don't mind re-gifting, but a, a, a new Gibson guitar is nothing compared to what we get to re-gift. And that's the Word of God. The Word of God that what? It, it, lead, it can lead to salvation if people hear it and believe it and receive it. Amen? And you can look at them and say, Merry Christmas. To the woman, he said, I'll greatly multiply your sorrow at your conception, and pain you'll bring forth children. I don't know about this. I've heard about it. I haven't had any children that way before. But it, it apparently it is, ladies, you can give your own testimony on that. But it's come true, has it? Then the other part, your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Well, that works, don't it? Huh? People are smiling, so I know that you understand what I'll say in there. Listen. Can you imagine before that it wasn't a problem? Why? Because Adam said, when she said, do this, she said, yes, ma'am, and he did it, he ate the fruit, I don't know. Whatever it was, he, he, before they didn't seem to have those problems, but now they have those problems. Then to Adam he said, because you heeded the voice of your wife instead of who? Instead of God. And have eaten from the tree which I commanded you shall not eat. Listen, <coughs> cursed is the ground for your sake. He didn't say you were cursed, Adam. He said cursed is the ground. That's an interesting statement. It's an important <coughs> statement. Why is it so important? What's Adam made of? Dirt. He's made of dirt. He's made of the ground. Right? Did you know that this body we have, ashes to ashes and dust to dust, however you want to say it, this body is not going to heaven. This body is not going to heaven. And you're sitting there saying, Brother Dale, if that body you guys go in heaven, it won't look like heaven to me. That's not what we're talking about, though. What are we talking about? This thing is no longer built to last for eternity because now the ground is cursed. And where did it come from? And so it can't get there. Cursed is the ground. It, it, it toil you'll eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it will bear, and you shall eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground from for out of it you were taken. Where's the death that occurred? It's talking about right there. People say, when did they die? He says, you're going back to the dirt. Your, your body is going back to the dirt. From dust you are and dust you return. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Amen? Romans uh, 6.23. The wages of sin is death. And here it is. He says, this is what's going to happen to you because of that. And Adam called his, his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. And then God did something. The rest of Christmas. The ultimate Christmas wrapping. And also for Adam and his wife, the Lord made tunics of skin and clothed them. What did they make their covering out of? Fig leaves. What died for that? Not the fig leaves. Right? Nothing died to be in the fig leaves. But a death had to be paid. And so for them to keep living, a death had to be paid. What died for these tunics to be made from animal skins? Animal. What did he show them? He said, I will accept the substitute. Now, did they live forever because of that? We don't know if their spirit did, but we know their body did. We know that, don't we? And so it had to be that a substitute had to die in their place. And so we get what? We know who the champion is. It's the seed of the woman. And we know how he's going to buy us back. Now he's going to become our substitute. What's he going to cost him? His life. We know these other uh, substitutes, these lambs and these ox and all that kind of stuff that they had, they were limited. But we know the substitute that Jesus Christ is, is eternal. These other things stayed dead. Jesus didn't. He beat death, didn't he? And so, what do we have for Christmas? We have a champion who can buy us back from our sins. Amen? 
And we know the price that he paid for the gifts. I know you're not supposed to leave it on there. On the presents. Leaving the price on there like Minnie Pearl used to on her hat. Right? But we know the price. It's here. It cost his death. These temporary ones, that was a picture. But the real thing is, we can be bought back for eternity. What do we learn from this? Don't listen to your own opinion about what's right and wrong. you got God for that. Amen? How many of us are still working on that? Sure we are. We come to these group meetings and stuff. That's what we're doing. We're working on that all. And it's not okay. My sin is not okay. The day I start saying my sin is okay with God, I become what? I start living a lie. My sin is not okay with God. And, and with God's help, I'm going to overcome it on earth so that he'll be more proud and I'll have a better witness for others. Amen? But my sin is covered by the blood. So it's not going to keep me out of heaven now, but it may keep others out of heaven if I start teaching a lie that my sin is okay. It's not. And out of gratitude for the one who would allow himself to be butchered, beat, killed, pierced. All these words that were done to torture, right? I could say, you know what, my sin makes me feel so dirty that it cost you so much. Have you ever got a gift and you were so overwhelmed by it? It was so expensive that you knew you didn't deserve it and you just didn't know what to do, how to, how to accept it? We know what to do. We live a grateful life. We live a life pointing to the one who, who went so extravagantly for the gift that we would get for the ultimate Christmas. Did anybody see Christmas in Genesis this morning? Did you see the gift and the price? Because of the coming of the Savior. All points to there in, in, in chapter 3, verse 15. We get to joyously declare that we are so loved by our God. And the best way that we can show our appreciation is to love Him back. Amen. If you've never made Jesus your Lord, you can do so by following what the Bible says. It says in Romans 10, 9, if you'll confess with your mouth that He's your Lord now. You're not following lies and, and the father of lies and all that anymore. You're following Jesus. And you believe in your heart God raised Him from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. You will get to take part in this joyous good news of Christmas. And if we are saved, we need to evaluate our opinion with God's facts. Amen. Not listen to our five senses. Listen to the one that made them. Amen. Let's stand and pray.